Father, make us who you call us to be. Father, continue to work on us. Make us those people that you call us to be. Make us the bride that you call us to be. In the name of Jesus. In his name. I said, it's in his name. There's no greater, no stronger name than his. And at the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, let's go. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess. There's one scripture that says, shall. But then there's another scripture that says every tongue, every niche about every tongue must confess. Before it's all said and done. Everything, everything, everybody who has breath must admit that he is Lord. Before Baba Bando Shikai, before it's all said and done and over, you're going to have to admit that He is Lord. You're going to have to admit that He is Lord. Whether you whether you admit it in on the earth, whether you admit it in heaven, or whether you admit it in hell, you're going to have to realize and understand that He is Lord. going to talk but you keep praising because I don't stop praise. You keep going but I don't stop praise. That's my rule. If anybody else has the mic you make up your own rule. But I don't stop praise. Because let me say this and make this very clear. What we have to understand is that when we get to heaven preaching will stop. Prophesying will stop. Your prayer will not be needed in heaven. Your sermon will not be needed in heaven. Your gift that you think is so strong, your anointing won't be needed in heaven. But the Bible, I quote to you, but the Bible lets us know that in heaven, the angels, the 24 elders, the beast, the, 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 the angelic beast, The angelic beings, they will be around the throne, and the, oh, I feel God real strong. They will all be around the throne, and the Bible lets us know they will say on one accord, Holy, 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 he is holy, wonderful counselor, mighty God. This is what we will be doing. with me. 
exalt his name together. Oh, I don't have a lot tonight, so again, I don't stop praise. In case you didn't know that. This is why, this is why I can't wait till we get there because uh, when we get to heaven, the Bible lets us know that before we get there, the Bible let us know, the Bible declares that we will take off corruptible and put on incorruptible. In other words, in layman's terms, you and I won't have these bodies. Believe it or not, I feel a dance. We won't have these bodies. Don't do that, Pastor Michelle. Because you will throw off the entire Bible study in a good way. We'll leave these bodies here. And I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to have new feet, new legs, new lungs. I won't need this body. This body that holds me back sometimes. I'll have a new body that I can praise God and not get tired. And the old saint said it like this. And every day will be like Sunday. I give him what he freely deserves. Yes. 
And one of the things I learned about it, uh, uh, Apostle Price, is that even when I don't feel it, after I give it to him freely, I ended up feeling it on the back end. Yeah. Because it'll be at that moment when I'm getting ready to end my day, and so all of a sudden I feel something creep on in on the inside. And I'll be sitting there mid-day and smitten worse, and I'll be like, God, where you been at? I, I was just, and God was like, oh, I just needed you to start. I was going to finish this. Bishop G.E. Patterson said something like this, and it stayed with me, and that's this. He said something like this. He said something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Clap those hands, everybody. Come on, give God some praise. Clap those hands, everybody. not apologize for praise. Amen. Every time I give God praise, every time I give him praise, I am reminded that it is practice for where I plan on spending eternal life. That's how you need to think about it. Every time I give him praise, it's a practice run. Every time I give him a dance, every time I give him worship, it's a practice run Amen. for what I'm going to do for the entire eternity yeah. of my existence with him. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for our senior leaders on tonight, Apostle and Co-Pastor Price. I want to get into this word very quickly. Let's thank God for our pastor, Pastor Michelle. Let's thank God for Sister Janine on tonight. Amen. Amen to our uh, social media audience. We thank God for you. Amen. I want to remind us that this weekend, is our pastor's birthday. Amen. 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 And so I want us to keep that in mind that this week, amen, it is our pastor's birthday. And so, um, amen, we're looking forward to a high time in God. Amen. 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 This Sunday, I believe, is going to be really great. I believe amen. we're going to have a, a, a an explosive service. Amen. 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 I believe that this year, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost says that this year will be a year of major changes in your life, Pastor Michelle. This year, there's a lot of things that are about to change. A lot of a lot of change after change. So you're going to have to get used to a lot of things changing around you. I know that sounds very general but there's a lot of changes says the Holy Ghost that's about to take place and so you're going to have to get used to multiple transitions you're going to have to get used to changes happening back to back because it's going to happen so the, Bible, the text says like this is in another translation but scripture is still scripture and the Bible says that it'll happen so fast, it'll make your head spin. And so, so prepare even towards the end of the So even prepare even towards the end of this month, you're going to see major changes take place. It's this year for you, it's going to be like, God, hold on, now I just got used to this thing being changed. No, it's going to be Change after change after change after change. So you're really going to have to brace for the impact of what's about to happen for you. Watch, 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 watch the hand of the Lord. I tell people that. I tell people that whenever there's a prophecy that 
that's really, really general like that and is big like that, I tell people just watch the hand of God. Because when you watch the hand of God, what that simply means is just stay in Him. Focus on Him and everything else will make sense. Amen. That, that, that's it. Because I, 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 one of the things about it is that I really like for these Bible studies and the atmosphere of it to be a little different. That's why we don't have music on live uh, on Wednesday nights and whatnot because it, it, I really want us to feel like class. I really want it to feel yeah. like an impartation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And those of you who are coming on and watching, amen, we ask that you would hit that share button. Amen, amen because I believe that something tonight is going to be said to really be a blessing to you. I want us to go quickly to Ephesians chapter 5. Thank you, God. Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And we want to look at verse 25 first. And we'll read down to verse 27. And that is all that I plan on reading. If we read more than we do. But I'm going to read this. But we are going to talk about Hosea. chapter 1 all the way to about chapter 7. We're not going to, I don't plan on reading any of it, but um, I don't plan on reading any of it tonight, but if we do, then we do. And we'll just go with the flow of how God does this. Because <laughs> I'm trying to prepare you for how we're about to move and do this, but we're just going to have to just jump right on in. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word of God or by the word that he might last first, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle 
or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I want to go back to verse 25 for just a moment. It's in the Paul, he's saying, husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I want to focus on the B clause and the C clause, even as Christ also loved the church, the church, the ecclesia. In other words, the body of Christ, his bride, his people, those that name the name of Christ, and not only name the name of Christ, but live according to his principles and his ways. He says for them, he gave himself for it. Let me even say this. He died not just for the saved, but for the unsaved. We know this, but I want us to really see this from another level. Because this Bible study tonight, this is what I can prepare you for tonight. This will be uh, more of an encouragement. He gave himself. Y'all don't mind if I take my time, right? Because I don't have a lot. He gave himself for it. Not just in his death, but he gave himself on for it when he heard his father look to him one day and say, son, you're going to have to go down there All right. and you're going to have to be, you're going to have to come from this form mm -hmm. and take on the form of man and put on flesh. Yes. And you're going to have to go down to earth for about 33 and a half years. And I need everything that you do down there. You can't go down there to play games. You can't go down there to, uh, and I'm, can I just paint the story? Yeah. Let's just say, no, you can't just go down there on your own accord. But I need every waking moment that you're down there to be about presenting me back to the people. In so much that even how you will leave earth will be freedom for the people, though you're going to feel like you're bound. You're going to feel like you've been forsaken. You're going to feel like I left you. You're going to feel heartbreak. You're going to feel every temptation on the man. But you're going to have to go and show my wife down there. Whoever decides to come after me, I need you to go down there and let my wife know. And if you are paying attention to what I'm saying, then you're seeing how I'm about to make the switch to the book of Hosea. I need you to go down 40 and two generations. And I need you to show my wife how much I love her. I need you. Y'all, I'm holding back tears, but I need you to go down there, and they're going to reject you. They're going to hate you. They're going to they're going to give you lip service that they love you. Literally, a week apart from the from the time that you're going to be crucified, they're literally going to tell you a week apart that I, that that we love you and ho 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 Hosanna. But then those same people are going to scream at the top of their lungs for your death. And suddenly, let me go ahead and prepare you and tell you that you're going to do nothing wrong. Yet you're going to go down there as an unblemished, unspotted lamb. And you're going to go down there and take the place of those that are hell bound yes. and give them an option, give them an option, give them an escape route from the hell that they deserve. You're going to go down there yeah. and you're going to redeem mankind. Yes. 
even the ones that don't want it. All right. Jeez, that's right. All right. With all that being said, look at the C clause of verse 25 again. It says, and gave himself for it. And gave himself. And gave himself. Let it digest in your spirit. He gave himself. All right. He gave himself. Freely. Shall I add that so we can really understand what the text is saying? He freely gave himself for you and I. Oh, don't worry. I'm about to show you where we're going with this. But I just need this to sit in your spirit real nice and sweet. Because our topic for tonight is God make us your bride. God make us your bride. Again, we are in our series topic, Set Free, Delivered, Made Whole. But again, our subtopic tonight is God make us your bride. And emphasis on the word make because the Bible lets us know that uh, God is married to the backslider. Yeah. He's married to the backslider. So it's not a matter of God stay married to me. It's a matter of God make me what you originally designed. Make me the image of a wife that you already had in your mind when you made me. God, make me more of the end result of what you called me to be the day I was born. Yes, thank you, Lord. Are you with me tonight? Amen. So in all that, with that in mind, Paul told them in Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 25, he said, Husbands, those of you who know the sacrifice of what Christ has done, the sacrifice of how he gave himself in place of us on the cross, in place of us and going to hell, because you do realize in the Lord, you know the Holy Spirit had to give me a revelation even this week, or was it sometime last week, but he gave it to me, and he said, he said, oftentimes you all get so excited about what I did for you on the cross, but you don't take the time to really think about the fact that my crucifixion did not stop when I gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. Because the Bible lets us know that when he died, he went from torment and he went back to torment. And he went from torment to torment. He went to hell after he died. Because what he took on, he took on the sins of the world. So that's why he would That's why when he was on the cross, he said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Because I believe that while he was on that cross, he looked up to heaven and he saw this image. I cannot even look on sin. Even though you're my son. Yeah. I, so my question, oh, wow. I just go ahead. What you said. So my question is, did he go? Did he go to hell because he still had sin on him, and he had to like that had to be released down here and then put sin to heaven? Or when he why? went to hell, he went to hell because he literally became sin. Right. Jesus. It wasn't just on him. Yes. Yes. Jesus. But he became it. Lord, Just to keep him safe. So when he died. That sin still had to be dealt with. Imagine you didn't do anything wrong. Yet you have to take on the sins of everybody else on the world. And another reason he had to go to hell is because all the sins that he took on, he couldn't repent of it. So he had to go to hell. He had to go to hell. He had to go through the fire and go on to all that and go take the keys of, hell, of death, hell, and the grave. Then he walked up out of hell. He had to, the Bible says he had to descend and then ascend. Go ahead, ask the question. So is that why the saying is, you know, when you go 
go down, you must come up. You, there's no other way to go but up. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Can we say that? You know? Yeah. Like, now, because he did, thank you for asking that question. Because he did what he did, yes. that saying is true. Hallelujah. If you're in God, yes. when you go down, you have no choice but to come back up. Here is, because we talk about, no, 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 because you're actually pushing this in a good way. The thing about it is, uh, what we have to understand is that, uh, 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 the Bible talks about the unforgivable sin being blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. But then there is, but then there is a sin. Then there is a sin that the sin. Of, okay, let me back up. Truly, what that really means, as far as blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, is what it truly means is to uh, 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 literally in mind, body, and soul reject what he did on the cross. Amen. Ultimately, that's what that means. It's not just what you say as far as blaspheme, but it's to know the truth and deny it. It's to know what he did and to choose not to believe. So with that being said, I've always feared that. God, I, I know I've said some crazy things, so I don't ever want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. But when I really did my study, I said, oh, in blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, it's not necessarily with what you say. It's with what you believe. If you ever decide to not believe and you never change your mind before death, you're done. Not only that, but here it is now to go to what you said. The issue about it is we don't go to hell because of sin. We go to hell because we commit the sin and never get back up. Nobody's going to hell solely just because of the sin itself. Because there is a redemption process called the crucifixion that literally lets us know that all I have to do is believe and repent. If I do those two things, then there's no way I can, because here it is, and that, if that was the case, we would always be, uh, whenever you mess up, Lord, I, I messed up and slipped this, or I messed around and said this, or slipped up and did this. Oh, God, please forgive me. Da, 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 da. Lord, please, God, I ask you, Lord, to just do this and do that. And, hold on, he already did it. Right, the day you decided, I'm going to believe him, I'm going to serve him, right. your walk with God, can I say this? When you decided to serve the Lord, your next fall was already calculated for. Your very next sin was already calculated for. It was already calculated. That's why he had to take on the sins of the world. Yeah, you're not, now, now, Paul, now here it is. With that being said, Paul had to let them know this. He said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. In other words, because some people will have that understanding and will say, oh, well, I can just sin freely in heat because he died for it. I'm just good to go. No. No, you must still. There is now a work that you must do. Yeah, you must reject that. But if you happen to fall, know that there is a redemption in your fall. There is a redemption process. There's forgiveness. It is automatically there. It was already calculated when you decided you were going to serve him. It was already calculated for him. But it is, it, it is though, uh, repent. we definitely need to know what repent means because sometimes we think repent means I'm sorry. But repent means to turn. So you mean you got to turn away from it. You say, right? You got to in order for you to, right? Yeah. When we say that we re actually, thank you for saying that. This is how we're going to go into Hosea. I'm not going to read anything from Hosea 
but I am going to reference. The Lord told the prophet Hosea, I want you to intentionally go find a harlot. I want you to intentionally go find a harlot. Go find what we call a whore, amen. whole, whatever, with a amen. amen. Go find one. Go find her. And I want you to not only, I want you to not only uh, 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 like be her girlfriend or whatever, or be her boyfriend. No, no, no. I want you to marry her. And he told Hosea to do this to show Hosea just how he felt about Israel. About how he felt about his people. No, no, no. I'm not going to just tell you how I feel. No, no. I want you to live it. I want you to wake up every day. I want you to wake up every day questioning if your wife laid with somebody else the night before. When she told you she would be working an extra shift or whatever have you. Now I'm just I'm just trying to paint the picture. And she said, Oh, I'm gonna be home late. You know, no, you know who you married. So it's not like you can trust her for you. Thank you. Thank you. But he trusts God. Ooh, because he knows That's right. No, no, no. Listen, if anything, if anything, I wish that this side of the room would act like you're acting. Amen. 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 I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. Hosea, I want you to go marry a harlot. Yes. Not only marry her, but she's going to give you children. And not only that, but there's gonna have there's gonna come a time where you're gonna have to go into the street and go buy her back. Wow. Go buy your wife back. No, you made a cut. 
You told me that you would give me you. I married you, not what you could do for me. What is God saying? He married us, not what we could do for him. God has to remind me of that sometime. He has to let me know, hey, listen, son, I'm not, I, I thank you for what you do for me, but I need to spend some time with you. Because, uh, I'm going to talk to you because I, 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 uh, 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 because uh, here it is. Now, uh, 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 I thank God for what you do, what you bring to the table, but I didn't make, I, listen, you, you, you're married to me. Stop treating me like I'm a gold digger, like I'm supposed to just be okay with what you do for us, for the family, for the church. No, no, no. I want you. So that means that uh, upon you getting married, upon you getting married to the Father, being married to the Father, not getting, but you're already married to him. But that means is that you're going to have to understand that a lot of your time upon receiving salvation, a lot of your time is going to be dedicated towards doing things with God. This is why the more in his word and more in prayer that we get, and that's why I thank God for this consecration. Because it's really showing us how selfless he's really called us to be. Husbands, love your wives. You know, I know that you don't like doing this, but because she likes it, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I told you to love your wife, I wasn't just telling you to provide. I don't know, I wasn't just telling you to make sure everything was good. No, no. I want you to listen to her. I want you, and vice versa, vice versa. Uh, uh, but I want you to listen. I want you to keep your ear open. I want you to spend time. I want you to do what you, what you don't want to do. I need you to become uncomfortable, even doing things that you said you would never do. That you may say you were scared to do, or that you say, oh, this really just doesn't interest me. No, you got to give yourself for who you love. You, even in being married, you got to die to you. Oh, I wish I had some help in you. You got to, now, I'm talking about marriage, but please tell me you guys are hearing it another way. That's right. No, no, no. Mary. The Lord, Mary. the Lord had to let me know, even like it was when it hit Amanda Even when it came down to Israel, Hosea, he had to really work with that thing. And when I say that thing, I'm not talking about the wife, but I'm talking about the the. The, the inner desire to say I'm done. All right. The inner desire to say I'm through. Yes. Come on here. I quit. Yes. So with that being said, <laughs> and we're getting ready to close. I promise. So with that being said. The father gave this to me some weeks ago, and now I'm finally getting a chance to say it. In other words, the same way that we have said that, oh, well, if I, now I'm just talking, I'm just, uh, but I need you to really just hear what I'm saying. Really hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Because here it is, many of us, we have said or even entertained the idea, or whatever the case may be. At one point in time, we said, oh, well, you know, I can't wait to get married because I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to not just hear me, hear me, hear me, where, where, uh, I, I, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be faithful, or oh, I'm, I'm going to love him, uh, and, and I know he's going to love me, we're going to do this, that, the third, we're going to have X, Y, Z amount of children, whatever the case may be, oh, 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 I just cannot wait, watch it, watch it, oh, I just can't wait till I get married because I'm going to show him what a faithful wife really is, because when he really, when he gets with me, he going to know that I'm the best thing that ever happened to him. Why don't we have that same? Come on. Yes. 
mindset. Come on. That's right. When it comes down Come on. to our Father. That's right. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord had to let me know that when it comes down to this harlot, as we get ready, as I as I'm getting ready to find my end in this. Uh, 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 uh. When it came down to this wife, Hosea, I believe his biggest thing that he thought to himself is, uh, I, my issue is not the fact that she failed, but my issue is that I really would desire for there to just be a change of mind. Because if she could really just understand, if she could just really get it, that if she could just really understand the principles of what this thing is in this relationship, then she could really, really receive the love that I have for her. But times get hard. Now here's, again, I told you that tonight would be encouraging because if you're hearing this, then how you should be hearing it is this. I thank God that he's taken the whole out of me. Hosea yeah, yeah. had to deal with the hope. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Hosea. Yes. Yeah, I know that you don't want anybody fondling and doing something that is supposed to be reserved for only you. To your life. But I told you to marry her. But please remember that the reason God told Hosea to marry her was to really show him as a prophet the state of the relationship between him and Israel. Him and his people. So imagine now God is saying if they could just really and, and here's where the encouragement should be at because now I believe especially during this consecration we're really seeing how much he really loves us we're really seeing how much our husband every once in a while whenever it comes to mind I, I, I call and this is in my private time because I know out loud it don't really sound uh, 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 you know logically correct but every once in a while, I, I, I look up and I say, uh, good morning, my husband. Right. No, because he's my yeah. husband. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. He's the one that is the head yeah. of my life. And I know that if I could just really get to a point where I trust him fully. And because he's showing me more and more the benefits of being married to him for real. Yeah. And in being married to him again, just like in our, in our, in our actual marriage, I have to conform to what, 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 to his principles, it's his way of doing things. Because it lets us know in Ephesians 5 27 that he might present it to himself at Glorious Church. He's coming back to present us to himself. When he comes back, when he raptures us up, it will be a divine wedding. Whether you've ever seen it like that or not. I love how Matthew put it because in the image just came before my eyes. I love how Matthew put it where there's five wives and five foolish and how they have oil, but then they are preparing for the bridegroom to come. Yeah. And as the five foolish, they went to go get more oil. The five wives were ready when the bridegroom came. And so they went into the wedding. Yeah. They went into the marriage where the five foolish had to sit on the outside because of the lack of principle yes. of making sure to have enough. Hosea, Hosea, Hosea. Yes. Because I know you are a student of the word of God, I know that you know what a real wife
wife is supposed to be like. I know that you, upon being born, always probably thought to yourself, oh, well, I can't wait to be married and have a wife. You probably never thought in a million years that I would wake you up one day and tell you, go find your heart. Never in a million years did you imagine that I would tell you not only marry her, but lie down with her and have children. Imagine how the father has felt. Because I believe that we are on, no, I don't believe, I know that we are on the road of what is called better. Again, I tell us, because I really got to close here, and that's this. God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for consistency. All right. Thank you. All right. That word holy, <laughs> that word holy, we have depicted to really mean perfect. When all actuality, it means to be set apart. For so long, we saw that word holy in being perfect. Y'all, I, I believe that somebody on live will get mad at me, but it's okay. We have always looked at that word, and we've always presented that word in being perfect. No, that word holy don't mean you're perfect. It means to be set apart. It means that you are married to a father who had all, you're married to a husband that died for your sins, that when you believe in him and walk after his ways, even when you mess up, come on, yes, Jesus, right. you're still holy. Come on. Did he just say that even though I mess up, I'm still holy if I'm following after him? Yes. 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 Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I failed even today. Come Amen. On. Come on. And he had to remind me, you're still holy. You're still mine. I'm holding back these tears. I'm, I'm telling you. He had to let me know. You're still mine. I knew coming down 42 generations what I would have to do 
and I knew that I would have to go through the most extreme pain and agony, and even after that pain and agony, I knew I would have to go down to hell just to save you. I don't care what you do. My only prerequisite for you is to repent, is to believe in me, repent, and never give up on you. I believe that if tonight is tonight where we close this series, I believe that's one great way to close it out. You want God to make you whole? Because that's the last part of the series. Set free, delivered, made whole. If you want to be whole, don't give up on you. Never give up on yourself. Never believe that, oh, I fail. And I just keep on falling. I keep on messing up. You know what? Forget it. I'm just not going to go back to church. I'm not going to read my Bible again. Don't you ever get to that decision. I don't care how many, I don't care if you messed up a thousand times in one day. The only way he can stop helping you is if you give up on you. And Hosea had to be faithful. What is it to be faithful to who is not faithful? What is it to love who does not want to be loved? What is it to marry somebody who wants to be single? What is it to marry somebody with the morals of marriage who has no morals? Who has no marital desires? Who don't even have the desire to be a mother? Yet you still, among man and among the world, you still claim who everybody else is laid down with. You still, in the midst of everybody, the per you could be around people on your job who just last night laid with who you married to, but in their face you still tell them that's still my wife. That's still my bride. That's what he's done for us. As we close tonight, I tell you that he will never stop making you the bride he's calling you to be. The only way the progression of what he's doing will ever stop is if you stop. If you give up. Hell will not be our home. I said hell will not. That's the response I was looking for. Thank you. Hell will not be our home. Because you clap, I'm going to speak for us. Hell will not be our home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But hell will not be our home. Because I'm not going to give up on me. No matter how much I mess up. Because just like Hosea, no matter how much his wife went back out in the streets, no matter how many times he had to go and buy her back from the streets, no, he had to go and buy her back. Read it in your leisure. Read it in your leisure. He had to go back to the He had to go back. God, I don't want this woman. Go get your wife back. Hallelujah. Refer to her as what she is. Your wife. Go get her. But God, go get her. Go get her. That's what he did for us. I'm done. Clap those hands, everybody. 
I believe something was said to bless us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It sure blessed me. It got me, it, I mean, tore me up tonight. Yeah, right. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank God for our pastor tonight. And those that desire, or those that, yes, those that desire to give, give on the level of what this was to you. If it blessed you tonight, yeah. amen. amen. And give on that level. Amen. Give what you have. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no set amount. Amen. Just do, uh, amen. Do what you can. Amen. amen. But I believe that if you put something in the ground, if you put something in what was sold tonight, or what was given tonight, I believe. I truly believe that you will reap. I truly believe that you, and it, I'm just using Bible. I don't have no, no gimmicks, no tricks. But I believe that if you give fervently tonight, I believe that if you give from the abundance, I believe from the abundance of your heart, I believe that you will reap bountifully. The Bible tells us uh, 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 that if we are, are so bound, that if we help me out with that. Amen. Now, what is it? If we, if we help me out with and get your mic and say it in the mic. What, what's that scripture? If we so bound, if we so uh, bountifully, sparingly, thank you. If we so sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. But if we so, if we so bountifully, we'll reap bountifully. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I decided to take a stand. Not knowing I'll lose my best friend. But I'd rather, I'd rather live right than in hell lift up my eyes. All of God's children just stand.